Father, we just thank you so much. You are so kind and patient and so gracious, Father. We thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit. Thank you that you're not there to disqualify us, but you are there to, you have qualified us. And you're there to help us, to help us to grow, to see. Um, and so we do thank you, Holy Spirit, that any blind spot that we have, you're there, Father, to just show us and help us and, and, and encourage us. And so we thank you, Father God, in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. You know, we were talking about the importance, and, and I made reference about all of us keeping that balance of the Word and the Spirit. You know, and I was talking, the first part was really to consider Jesus, what he did on the cross, and we can consider Jesus because, of course, we're not just going to take a cross and look at him hanging there and, and just stare at that, you know. No, what, how are we going to consider Jesus, who is the author and finisher, by considering the Word? By giving our attention and focusing, like Mike was saying, our focus has to be on the Word. What the promises of God, like, you know, Abraham received a promise of God. We have God bunches of promises specific promises for whatever it is that we need so that is what we have to keep our focus on on the promise on the word i mean if you need healing then find what the word of god says about healing keep your 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 and you know that demands that demands a violent and and that's what i'm talking about a certain violence to despite of what's going on in your body around you uh, uh just to focus to tune off everything and just to kind of focus laser focus on the promises of god and that will because it is so simple, but it's not automatically easy. And that is usually most people, they want an easy way out. You know, and that is where most people fail. Because it is so simple, you know, but yet sometimes the simplest thing that we neglect. And so it's not about getting, you know, greater revelation. No, it's going to the word, the promise of God and laser focus on it. Tune off everything else and just go and consider the promise of God. Consider it. Amen. But what, you know, we say when we do that and we laser focus on the promise of God and consider the promise of God, we say that it is where Jesus, where faith will rise because he is the author and the finisher of our faith. And listen to what one more scripture about it, which I think is so powerful. In um, 2 Corinthians 4, verse 16 through um, 18, it says, Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is, being, is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, I like that, our light affliction. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, let's keep things in perspective. It is only for a moment. It is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Unfortunately, some people have stopped there, saying, well, we've got to go through the affliction, affliction because it's going to work something in you. No, no, no. Let's continue. When is it going to work? something when is it going to work the globe show the glory of god it tells you the next verse while we do not look consider look with intention and intensity while we do not look at the things which are seen our problem our circumstances or you know sickness but we look at the things now let me Back at them. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Did you see? It's saying the same thing I've been saying. While we look at the promise of God, 
It's going to work something on the inside of us. It's got, what is it that's going to work in us? Faith. And that, through the affliction, when we focus on the promise of God, it's going to work something on the inside of us. Faith will rise up on the inside of us, and that is what's going to cause our affliction to glorify God, to work a great, what did he call it? It will work for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. But you see people, the affliction by itself is not going to work anything. It is when we are in the affliction and we, whoo, here again, laser focus on the word of God, on the work of Jesus, we keep our eyes on him, find the promises, and we just consider, consider it, and it's going to work something in us. Amen. The word of God. Hallelujah. But now I want to talk about something else because here is the problem. We are in a culture, in a, even in the church, a generation where we are so, we have so much availability to knowledge. Amen. We are bombarded. I mean, on the click of a finger, we can listen to messages galore. And it's awesome, isn't it? But yet, it can also hinder us. Because I have found also that very often people, there is, and like I said, the temptation is you have received a truth. The temptation is like, it's not working, so let's find another truth. Let's find another revelation. Let's find another revelation. No, no, no. Let's go back to that one simple revelation of Jesus and focus on that. And, and, but here is what I'm saying, is that because we are so bombarded with knowledge, Bombarded with awesome teachings, you know, it's like having a, a deck of cards. You got a full deck of cards, you know, you got all. And you know what I found out oftentimes in the church? People are overwhelmed. Because, I mean, you hear so many good messages. One message is going to stay and turn into the rest. Another message is going to say, faith is an act. You know, another message is going to say, you know, uh, uh, rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. Another message says, keep your confession straight. Another message said, fight the good fight of faith. I mean, and you've got all those messages. And then you face, you know, by sickness, you're like, what do I do? Do I rest? Do I fight? Do I confess? Do I, you know? And you're overwhelmed with that abundance of knowledge and revelation. And you're like, what do I do? That is where... We have, we need the Holy Spirit. Because you have noticed a lot of people, they got the word and it's good. The word, the word, the word. But they are trying to apply the word without the help of the Holy Spirit. And they are overwhelmed, they are frustrated, and they fail. Did you remember the scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57? It says, thanks be to God, Jesus who gives us, always gives us the victory in Christ Jesus. So we know that we have the victory in Jesus Christ. You know, we consider Jesus on the cross. You know, and you look, you focus, laser focus on the... But here is something, like I said, you're like, what? You've got a whole availability of all that knowledge. Although, I mean, there is thousands of promises, maybe hundreds, probably thousands of promises. What do I focus? All of a sudden, instead of laser focusing, you're going like a bird shot. You know what I mean? And it's hard to laser focus when you've got 20 promises. So what do you do? But in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, you see a different letter from Paul. He said, thanks be to God who leads us into triumph. You see, those two have got to come together. In one, Paul says, thanks be to God that in Jesus Christ you have the victory. But he, 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 then he adds, he said, thanks be to God that he will even lead you to that victory. And who is it? Who is he talking about? 
the Holy Spirit. You see, Jesus obtained the victory on the cross. He was the snake, the bronze serpent lifted up. And we've got to laser focus on his promises, on what he did on the cross. But you are not left to do it on our own. He said, thanks be to God who in Jesus Christ, he sent you the Holy Spirit to lead you from point A to point Z. You see, it is... The word of God, it's like a deck of cards, but it's the Holy Spirit that will help you to laser focus. It's the Holy Spirit that said, okay, here, you know, he is the spirit of wisdom, is he not? And what is wisdom? Wisdom is knowing how to apply a certain truth for your given situation. So you see, you've got all the truth, all the promises for your situation, but the Holy Ghost knows your heart. He knows your life. He knows your circumstances. He knows your problem. He knows everything. The past, present, future. He's got all knowledge. All, and the Holy Ghost will help you to laser focus on saying, as you read the word, he will go, you need this. You need that. I, that reminds me. You know, I was talking about being healed of bone cancer. This is exactly what the Holy Ghost. Why is it that I was able to get a hold of the victory? Because I was funded on the word. You see, I had built my life on the word of just like you are doing. You are going to Bible school. You are building your life on the rock. You are building, you are putting the word of God in your heart. But you see, I remember this is what happened. Um, right after I got married, a few months after... I started to develop pain in, on the inside here of my hip. And, and, and so it started to really hurt. And, and, and so my husband uh, told me, he said, Audrey, he said, I'd like you to go to the doctor and get checked, please. To give you a little background, before we were married, my husband was married to a beautiful, wonderful lady. She died of, of lung cancer. Without ne she never smoked one cigarette, but she died of lung cancer. Now we are married a year later. And, and, and so now I'm starting to develop pain in my body. So you understand, my husband says, Audrey, I would like you to get checked. And so I made an appointment to the doctor. But a few days before the day, I mean, two in the morning, the Holy Spirit, I mean, I wake up two in the morning on the dot. And the first night, I didn't pay attention, thinking, well, maybe I ate a little too heavy, and I'm waking up. The second night, two in the morning, I'm like, what's happening? The third night, down and the light came on, I'm like, it's the Holy Ghost. So I got out of bed, went into my living room, and I didn't know what was happening. I didn't know what I, so you know what I did? I started to pray in the Holy Spirit. And I prayed in tongues, and I prayed in tongues for probably 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, something I heard, and I'm not, I didn't hear an audible voice, but I heard a, a, a it, it was like an impression. I heard inside a still small voice that said, there is cancer in your body. Now, the interesting thing is cancer hadn't even crossed my mind. I never even thought about it. That was the last thing on my radar. But I heard there is cancer in your body. But there was a peace that came with it. And immediately, the Holy Spirit starting to give me what I call a plan of attack. He said, but this, this, do this, do this. And he started to pull scriptures. You see, that's why we've got to be funded on the word. Because the Holy Ghost, not only did he write and inspire the word, but he will use the word to guide you and lead you. It's easier to be led by the Holy Spirit when you've got that word on the inside. Amen. And so the first thing he told me, he said, there is cancer in your body, but the joy of the Lord will be your strength. And then he told me, don't tell anybody you have cancer. Only five people that have faith and believe like you do. And then he told me other things. Amen. At the time, I did not understand really what, why he said what he said, and, and, but I knew, you see, these were the keys. The Holy Ghost was using, was telling me what I, I needed to do. So you know, in my living room, you know what I studied to do? I studied to dig deep and go into the joy of God, because the joy of God is in us. And I started going, he, he, ha, ha, ho, ho, hu, hu. 
and it, I sounded, I felt stupid. I was self-conscious, but I knew that was the Holy Ghost that was leading me to the triumph because I knew healing belonged to me. I knew it was done on the cross. I knew by the stripes of Jesus I was healed. But how did I go from here, I have cancer, to getting a hold of that healing? Holy Ghost gave me those direction. Amen. And so that's what I studied to do. I studied to laugh. Ha, ha, ho, ho. And then all of a sudden the song came. The joy of the Lord is my... And I started to sing. But you know what happened after 20 minutes of laughing and just singing and dancing? And I felt stupid and self-conscious, but I didn't care. I knew that was the key, you see, from the Holy Ghost. Uh, because I had the word, you see, I knew the word. But it was him pulling a card out of the deck and saying, the joy of the Lord will be your strength. And as I, after 20 minutes, it's like a river of life just flowed out of my spirit. And I started to laugh. And it was all of a sudden, it was a life-giving river that came. And I started to laugh and roll on the floor. You know the kind of laugh that hurts you on the inside? And at that moment, after laughing and laughing for 20 more minutes, it's like I just knew. It's like God pulled the curtains and I just knew that I was, I received my healing. And I had all of a sudden, it was like I just knew. You know, the scripture that the Holy Ghost gave me another scripture. He says, count it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter all kind of trials. And, you know, and I knew at that moment that I was counting it all joy because I had the victory. And I, was, I could rejoice, not because I was being afflicted, but because I knew I had the victory. And at that moment, I knew that that light affliction was going to work in me a greater weight of glory. And I, I saw it. And it was not, at that moment I saw, it is not, oh, poor me, why is this happening to me? At that moment, I had the God's perspective. You know, the Bible says he sits in the heaven, he laughs. Because he knows the end of the book. And at that moment, you see, the Holy Ghost showed me. He took that scripture and he showed me, you rejoice because you know you win. You know that you have the victory. And you know that it's in that moment that you can put the devil a black eye. Put him back in his place. And so I had that perspective at that moment. Long story short, two days later, when I went to the doctor, and I went, sat across the doctor, she did an MRI, and she told me, she confirmed, I had a big smile because I knew I, I knew I was healed. I had the joy of the Lord. I had received my victory right there in my living room because Holy Spirit had led me to the triumph. You see? And so the doctor said, there is cancer in your bone. She sent me to the Mayo Clinic, and the, the oncologist they did MRI, CAT scan, bone scan. And then, long story short, I prayed. And I said, Holy Spirit, I said, I need time. And I said, I know I'm healed, but my husband doesn't. And the doctors, I mean, I need time for my faith. What the, you know what is working on the inside of me? Manifest on the outside. So I said, Lord, you know, and we can talk with the Holy Spirit. And so I was talking, and I said, I need a little more time, Holy Spirit, because I know I'm healed, but I need time for, for it to manifest somewhat. And so the oncologist told me, she said, she had the MRI of the week before, and then the new MRI, CAT scan and bone scan, and she said, I don't understand, but the tumor had shrunk just a little bit. So she said, I'm going to give you an option. We either do surgery, and they told me that they could do like plastic surgery, you know, plastic hip, or you come back in two months, and in two months, we'll do the same test and see what happened. And so I knew that was an answer to my prayer. You see, that's the thing. We have got to learn to depend on Holy Spirit. We are funded on the Word, but we commune with Holy Spirit. We talk with Him. We ask Him. We, we work with Him because He's there to work with us to get us to that place of victory and triumph. Amen. And so right there, that's what I said. I said, I, I'm coming back in two months. Well, long story short, two months. But here is something interesting. Because I'm talking about being funded on the word, but working with the Holy Spirit to get 
to that place of victory. You know what was interesting? Is the cancer that I had was a bone cancer, right? Shows you the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. When he told me, the joy of the Lord will be your strength, what did he do? He knew exactly what was happening in my body. And then years later, I mean, it's just two, three years ago, I'm reading my Bible and I discovered Proverbs 17, 22. That says, and joy, he said, a merry heart will do good like a medicine, but anxiety will rot the bone. I mean, do you see the wisdom of the... I could not have come up with that on my own. But Holy Spirit knew exactly what was happening in my body. And he, deck of card, he just said, oh, I know. He knew I had bone. And he knew that tapping into the joy of God, into that truth, that promise, and that revelation, it is what I needed to counterattack that specific sickness. You see, because this is a problem oftentimes. We have so much knowledge, so many messages that we hear. We are trying to use the word and apply the word as methods and principles. And it doesn't work because there is not the light. That's what I was saying. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Or the word of God spoken by the Holy Spirit. That word of God that becomes a rhema to your word. You see, alone in my living room, I knew the word. I knew the joy of the Lord is my strength. I sang it with, you know, the best of them. But that night in my living room, when I'm there seeking the, the God and I'm Connecting with the Holy Spirit. You see, praying in tongues made me more sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Praying in another tongue, you see, made me more apt to hear what the Holy Ghost was wanting to do and to say. And when he gave me that word, that word that I knew right here became that rhema word, hearing, hearing by the word spoken by the Holy Spirit to you. That's the reason why. It's not just about us. And don't take me wrong. We got, like I said, you've got to base your life on the word. But you also have to learn to trust on the Holy Spirit to take that a specific scripture for you. Amen. And that's why we got to talk to the Holy Spirit. Some people don't talk to the Holy Spirit. You know, you can say, Holy Spirit, you know, show me, lead me, guide me, pray in the Spirit. And so, right there in my living room, he had spoken that word. And like I said, specific things. Amen? And so that is what we have got to learn to do. You know, because now, you know, we are in that covenant of the Spirit. In Jesus, you know, that's what the Word of God says, Romans 7, verse 6. It says, but now we have been released from the law. You know, the law is following, you know, the letter of the law, following, you know, according to, if I do this, you know, the do's and don'ts. But he said, now we've been, we've been freed, released from trying to uh, apply the do's and don'ts. And you know, as Christians, we can do the same thing with the New Testament. Don't look at me so innocent. If you just take the New Testament and read it and say, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this and I'm going to do that, you're just going by the letter of the law. Just like the Pharisees. They knew the word inside out, outside down, and upside around. But yet, there was no life. We say we've been released from the law, having died to that which held us captive, that we may serve in the newness of the Spirit. Amen. Well, I like what another version said, that we may serve in the new way of the Spirit and not in the old way of the written code. We can look at the New Testament and turn it into a written code of do's and don'ts. But we are 
And we've got to go in the new way of the Spirit. Where we trust, we read the Word with the help of the Holy Spirit. We read and study the Word asking the help of the Holy Spirit to understand. And then we walk in the newness of Spirit asking the Holy Spirit to guide us into the victory and the triumph. You understand? Hallelujah. Glory to God. That is the reason why we've got to learn to be led by the Spirit. Romans 8, 14. Those who are led by the Spirit, these are the sons of God. You know, and it's a new covenant for sons and daughters of God to learn to be led by the Spirit. Why? Because we are no longer under the written code. We are now focusing on the Word of God You know, considering the word, what Jesus did on the cross with the help of the Holy Spirit. We are not on our own. We are, we, we've got to learn to depend on, you know, the word and the spirit. Amen. So that's why Jesus said, I'm leaving, but I'm going to send you just one just like me. He will guide you into all truth. He will show you things to come. He will bring things to your remembrance, et cetera, et cetera. The Holy Spirit. Amen. So we've got to beware to lean on our own understanding, even in the Word. It's very easy to do, like I said. You can study the Word of God, and then, because you have the Word of God, you lean on what you know of the Word. It's quiet in this Catholic church. (laughs) You know I'm joking when I say that. But, I mean, it's very easy to do. You can have the Word, study the Word. I mean, look at the Pharisees. I mean, they knew the the Bible or the Old Testament by heart. But yet, they, through the Word, they were leaning on their own understanding. And listen to what the Word of God says. Proverbs 14, verse 12 said, There is a way that seems right to man. You see, you can take the Word... And there is a way that can seem right to you, even in the Word. But what does it say? But its end is the way of death. That's why some people today, even in the church, they are applying the Word, they know the Word, but it doesn't produce life. Why? Because they're just trying to lean on their own understanding of what the Word of God said without the help of the Holy Spirit. We have an example, a great example, King David. You remember King David? King David, in, in, I believe it's in First Chronicle chapter 13, his heart was right, and most Christians, their heart are, are right, really. And so David wanted to bring the Ark of the Covenant back into the city of David. So what did he do? The Bible said that he consulted the captain of hundreds and the captain of thousands. And you know what he said? Okay, guys, we want to bring the ark back. What shall we do? You know what they did? They leaned on their own understanding. They said, what do people do? Well, you know, what do the people do? Well, when they want to carry something, they find a new cart. They find a cart with, you know, oxen. That's how we carry stuff around. And so that's what David did. The Bible says that David did not consult God, but he consulted the captain. He consulted man, the wisdom of man. And then we know what happened. And actually, it's interesting. When you read in First Chronicle 13, it said, even talk to the captain of hundreds and thousands, and he says, it seems right to us. And if it does seem right to God, I mean, wrong order. He should have said, let us find out if it's right to God, then it will be right to us. But he said, oh, it seems right to us. And then if it seems right to God, and they did it, men's way, and you know what happened. They carried the ark on a new, brand new car. They say, man, let's get a brand new car and a brand, brand new pair of oxen. And as they moved and they rejoiced, they danced, their heart was right. But then what happened? Uzzah tread because the ark was, you know, starting to tip. Uzzah was behind, put his, his hand, and then died. And then what happened? The Bible says that David got angry at God. Then he became afraid of God. And then he withdrew from God or from the presence of God. And, you know, it's interesting. You know, why? Number one, let me answer a little question. Why did Uzzah die? 
on the spot. I'm going to tell you why. I like to say it this way. You know, it's like electricity. If you touch a live wire that has not been insulated, let's see what happens. Any electrician in the room? How, my husband, you are an electrician? Or you know about electricity? What will happen if you touch a live wire and it doesn't have that insulation around? You'll get hurt. Well, that's what happened to Uza. You see, it was not what I call insulated. Why? Because we found that later when David consulted God after he cooled down and after he said, Okay, God, I know God, I got angry, I got afraid, I withdrew. But then he saw Abed Adam getting blessed. So he said, Okay, now how are we going to get it? Apparently, it didn't work that way. Apparently, it failed. Somebody got hurt. So when he went to God and he consulted God, he found that, that in the word, God had spoken how to carry the ark. It was only the Levites, and they had to carry the ark on their shoulder. Why is it they carried the presence of God? They carried that anointing upon them, and they were not hurt. Why? Because they were, as I call it, insulated. They were called, anointed, appointed, insulated, like, an elect, like a wire, you know, like insulation around. They were called, therefore they were insulated from being hurt from that power. But Uzzah was not. Uzzah was not called. He wasn't appointed. And because he was not called and appointed, he was not insulated. Do you understand what I mean by that? He, was, he didn't have that seal of protection around him. And when he touched that love wire of that anointing, it hurt him. Just like you, if you go and touch and you're not insulated, it's going to fry you. I mean, it would be stupid if you go, you know, your feet are wet, you touch a, a live wire and then, and then you say, God, why did you do that to me? You stupid. And that is exactly, and you notice that they got hurt. Some, somebody died. Why? Not because it's God that did that in his mouth, but it's because they did not seek the Lord to find out what they had to do in that specific situation. And once they did, it worked. And the, you know, this is what happened, is happening in the body of Christ. People hear a message about healing or about the anointing, and then they try to do it, in their own wisdom, it seems right to them. Okay, somebody has cancer. Let's call a chain of prayer. 2,000 people, that's good enough. Or oh, let's just, you know, do this and do that. They try to do things in their own wisdom, in their own way. It seems good to them. And then the person dies. And then people get disgusted. They get afraid. They get, and then, you know, that's how people come up with wrong doctrines. Healing is not for today. Oh, you know, come that God made them, you know, kill them. It might have been the will of God. That's how people come with all those goofies. Because they try, like David, to do things in their own wisdom, in their own way, without going to God. And then it doesn't work. And then they put it on God's credit. Do you understand? I mean, it's a one and the, it's the exact same things. That's how in the body of Christ, people got hurt. People got confused. People got Angry at God. Have you ever met people offended at God? Because they prayed, they believed for the healing, it didn't happen. And then they get angry at God. Then they get, you know, afraid of the message on healing or, or faith or anything like that. And then they withdraw. And then you have those that go one step further, they'll become aggressive against. Amen. Or oh me. You see? But... Here is what I like about David. Once he cooled his jets and he realized it wasn't God's fault, it's us on this end. David had enough humility. He went after that and consulted God. And God took him where? To the word. Took him right to the word and showed him, this is what I set in place. Do this and it will work. 
You see, with the help of the Spirit of God, God showed him exactly how to get it done. And he did and it worked. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm -mm -mm. So the, the bottom line is, you might have the word and you need to have the word of God in your heart. But don't try to walk in the letter, you know, or walk in the... But start allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you, to pull, like I said, to show you in the word, what do you need? What is that promise that you're going to consider? That promise that you need to laser focus on? That promise that it's going to be good for you, your situation, your problem? And you're going to see it works. And you know, we should not take that lightly. It is not really an option. Or thinking, well, yeah, it's not. Listen to what the word of God says about this. When we, you know, when we, we don't do that. We think, well, you know, it's okay. But the Bible calls that, listen to what the Bible says. In Second Chronicle 12, 14, it says that, the a king did evil because he did not prepare his heart to seek the Lord. You see, for us, we take that as, well, I forgot, it's no big deal, God has mercy. No, no, God called that evil. When we rely on the hand of the flesh, when we rely on our own wisdom or our own knowledge about, you know, and we don't go to the one that God sent to us, you know, to lead us and to help us and to equip us and to prepare us and to take us to that place of victory. Amen? We have, you know, in the Old Testament, we have a, a guy called King Asa. King Asa, it's interesting because God is so merciful. You know, God is so good. But I mean, here is a king. The Bible shows us, and it's in Second Chronicle, chapter 16. In Second Chronicle 16, it shows the, God sent a prophet to that king, because that king was facing a, a, a situation. And the prophet says, he said, remember, he said, remember when you were, when the Ethiopian were attacking you, they were multiple, they were huge in numbers, and you were, a small nation, but because you seek the Lord or because you put your eyes, you turn to God and ask God for his help, he delivered you from that great multitude and that great army. Even though you were little and they were big, God delivered you. Why? Because you took the time to turn to God and said, hey, help, help me here, lead me, guide me. What do I do? But then, the prophet said, but he said, you did evil in, in, in 2 Chronicles 16, in verse 7, that's found in 7, uh, verse 7 through 9. And I like it even says, the eyes of the Lord ran to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart are, is loyal to you. But he said, in this you have done foolishly because now he has a problem against a smaller army and he's thinking, well, now I can do it on my own. I can help. Oh, now I'm going to, he went to the Syrian to ask for help. And God says, you did evil in that you did not see God. He said, remember, remember how God delivered you when the situation was impossible. And now the situation seems you know, I can handle it kind of thing. And because you did not see God, he says God was not only displeased, but you failed. You got beat up. But then it's interesting that the prophet, in God's mercy, went to him to warn him. He said, look, when you were against an impossible situation and you looked to God, God helped you, defeated the enemy. He said, now in a, you know, smaller kind of problem, you did not see God and you got defeated. Did you learn your lesson? But yet, we find out, listen to a few verses later. In verse 12, and it says, In the ninth, 39th year of his reign, Asa became diseased in his feet, and his sickness was severe. Yet, 
In this disease, he did not seek God, but he seek the physician. What is it saying? Even though the prophet showed him, he said, look, when you face bad situation and you turn to God, he helps you. And look, when you did what happened, when you didn't turn to God, you got defeated. Yet he did not learn his lesson. And when he ran into a sickness, his first reaction was to go to the doctors. Now, am I saying that it is wrong to go to the doctor? Am I saying it is wrong to seek, you know, the doctor or to take pills or medicine or uh, 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 medical treatment? No. But what I'm saying, it is not wrong if this is what the Holy Spirit is leading you to do. But it is wrong if you do it first before going to the Holy Spirit. Now, let me show you something. And I'm going to be totally transparent, totally vulnerable. But I remember when I first got married, you know, because I, here it is. You, the, the fact is, going to the doctor or taking medicine is not right or wrong. But it is if it's not what the Holy Spirit leads you to do. I remember when I first got married to Fred, long story short, you know, I had, I had been a missionary living on the mission field that now I get married in a city I don't know anybody, with a church I really don't know anybody, in a family, I mean, I hate to say by the time his family didn't want me, they still, you know, couldn't understand that one year later Fred got remarried. I guess they were expecting him to mourn for 10 years, I don't know. And so here I am, and God tells me to put my ministry on hold for two years. So I am in a house, you know, a big house that, I, that you know, by myself, because Fred works from sun up to sundown. Nothing to do because I'm not, you know, I am put the ministry on hold. Uh, I don't have any friend. I don't have any, you know, anybody I can talk to, pray with. I'm just like, oh. And so... I remember there was so much change in my life. There was so much stuff going on that it was, I felt like I was in the middle of a cyclone. And I'm like crying out for help. And so I remember going to the doctor for a normal ladies checkup. And so I'm sitting across that doctor, a really nice lady. And, and she's asking me questions, talking. And then all of a sudden she takes a good look at, at me. And she's a Christian. So I believe the Holy Spirit was really leading her. She takes a look at me and she said, you need help, don't you? She said, what's going on in your life? So I'm telling her, well, I just this and I just that. I just, you know, I, I'm not doing anything because I'm not, you know, I put the ministry on hold and I'm, you know, I'm well, Long story, I just told her a little bit what's happening. And she says, she says, you need help. And as she's looking at me, I go, <laughs> start, I mean, just melting in tears. I mean, it just came out of me. And I'm even thinking, why am I? But she's like, you needing help. She said, you are, and this is her word. She said, you are like, you know, like a, the people that juggle, you know, at the circus and you go like this and it go like this and it goes faster and faster and they're trying to add more balls to your thing and you're like she said you need help she said actually she said she she had done some you know stuff she said you got a chemical imbalance in your brain she said you've got chemical imbalance which cause your brain where you go up and down, up and down. One day you'll be, you know, you'll be okay. The next day you, you know, you'll feel depressed. The next day you, you understand what I'm talking. And so she said, you need help. You need, I'm going to give you a pill, something that will help you in that. You know, now I understand I'm a woman of faith. You know, I walk by faith and not by sight, you know, and I'm going to, by golly, I'm going to get a hold of it by faith. And so I resisted it. I mean, I took the prescription, went home, but I resisted it. And inside I was like, I'm not taking no pill for my brain. But then, for, 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 for the mercy for my husband's sake, you know, I thought, it's not fair on him. So after a little bit, I said, you know what? It got bad. So I said, you know, for, 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 for our, our marriage and for his sake, I said, I'm just going to take that pill. So I went. But you know, I took that pill and I felt so guilty. I felt so condemned. I felt like a failure. I felt like I was, I was you know, failing God. I felt zero, like Andrew says, with the rims knocked off, you know. 
And I felt so bad. And so I took that, that pill and I took it. And, and one day I said, I'm going to stop. I have faith. I'm going to stop. So I tried to stop the, that pill. And man, big mistake. It got worse. So finally after, you know, a week, I said, I've got to take it back. So I took the pill again. And then the Holy Ghost, you know, and I, and I went to the Holy Spirit. And I said, Holy Spirit, what's happening? Well, you know, I'm walking by faith and not by sight. And faith is an act. So I'm going to give up that medicine. Have you ever heard people do that? They, they stop because they think this is, ah, this is faith. I've got to. And so I went to the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit said, he said, I never told you to stop. He said, I want you to take that pill. I'm like, what? The Holy Ghost spoke to me. He said, I want you to take that pill. He said, I want you to take it so you can recenter yourself. You can strengthen yourself and strengthen your faith. And recenter yourself. And he said, and when you're strong enough, when it's time, I will tell you when to stop. You're like, you telling me the Holy Ghost is telling you to take a pill? Sometimes he might because he knows where you're at. He knows what's going on in your life. He knows where your faith is. He knows what you need. He's not there to look at you and, and you know, judge your faith and say, ah. no, he's there to help you and guide you into triumph. To get you to that finish line where you can walk free. That's what he wants. And if it means he's going to take you from step one, two, three, by going through the doctor and taking a pill, he'll do that. You saw what I mean? And so the Holy Ghost, he said, I never told you to quit. He said, take that pill and take it so you can strengthen your faith. You can recenter yourself. And he said, and when it's time to quit, when you're ready, I will tell you. He said, but when you take that pill, take it by faith. You see, until then I was taking that pill, pill under condemnation. I, wa I was resentful. I was like, ah, no faith. And so he said, take it by faith. He said, he said, this is how you do it. And he showed me how to take a pill by faith. He said, every time you take that pill, you say, Lord, I thank you that this pill is going to do me good and it's not going to hurt me. No side effect. And I thank you, Lord, that I know that I am healed by the stripes of Jesus. And I thank you, Lord, that when it's time to quit, you will show me. And every day, I don't know how long it was, maybe a couple of weeks, maybe up to a month. I don't know how long, I don't remember. But I remember one thing. One morning, I woke up and I knew that I knew that I knew that I, that I didn't need any more. You see, it was not me, I'm going to walk. What it is, it was the work of the Holy Spirit. You see, I was founded based on the word, but then I allowed the Holy Ghost to show me the word, to help me with the word. And that morning, I took all my pills, flushed it in the toilet. It's been 19, I never needed it ever since. Do You see how you allow the Holy Spirit to lead you, amen, and to triumph. Because so many times we hear messages or we hear the word or we know the word and we try to apply the word like a method, like a principle, and it fails. Because it doesn't have the life of the spirit. You're just trying to apply it because it makes sense, good sense, when really we've got to allow the Holy Spirit to guide us, to show us, to take the word, to make it real to us so that we can apply it. And that's when faith comes. Faith comes by hearing the word from the Holy Spirit. And that's where there is victory. That's where there is life. Amen. And so we've got to guard ourselves to take the word of God and apply it as a method or a principle. We have got, you know, we really have to be careful. I remember it reminds me of um, a, a, a man, and I, well, I won't keep you too much longer. I want to be able to pray for, for you. But there was a guy, he had diabetes. And, you know, he heard the message, the message on faith. And then, you know, he, I didn't pray for him. It was somebody else that prayed for him. And then... He heard a message, just he was so excited, and then, you know, he believed, I received my healing, and then he went home. And the next morning, without even thinking about it, he went to the fridge to take his insulin. But then he heard the Holy Spirit said, you are healed. You don't need that stuff. 
Remember, you heal. And so he said, oh, I am healed. I, I've received healing. And so he didn't take the insulin. Amen. And then a few days later, he had to go for a normal check to the doctor. And the doctor said, what happened to you? You know, you're, you are totally, totally healed. And so you're not a diabetic anymore. Your insulin level is just fine, great. So he went to church. He testified, got excited. But in the church, there was somebody else sitting there that was a diabetic. And what did they hear? They heard, I stopped my insulin and I got healed. You see, he heard a truth that is a truth. Faith with that act is dead. You know, let me show you my faith by what I'll show you my faith by what I do. You see, he was acting on a principle from the Bible that is true. But to him it was Ramai. It was the Holy Spirit that guided him into that place. But the other one, he heard that principle. He heard the word, but he did it. And what happened to him? He went back. He said, oh, he heard. If I stop my medicine, God will heal me. He applied a truth. He applied the word with that. The direction of the Holy. With that, that revelation. With that, that rhema. And he just fell flat. He had to be rushed to the hospital. Do you understand what I'm saying? So we have to guard ourselves from applying the word, seeing the word and applying it like a method, 10 steps to, 5 steps to, like a, a principle. Let me add something else because as I go around and I hear people will ask me questions, I hear problems, I see questions, then, and I try to find an answer. And I remember there were, I was in Switzerland, and there was a guy that I was sitting across, we were eating lunch. And he said, Audrey, he said, I don't understand. He said, my father was a godly man. And he had, I think he was cancer. And then, you know, he, he went to God, and, you know, he, he cried out to God, went to God, and God told him to do this, and he got healed. And oh, he was glorious. He said, but one year later, that same cancer came back. And he did the same thing, and he died. Why is that, Audrey? I don't understand. And I've heard that a lot, where people received a revelation from the Holy Spirit, but then they tried to do the same thing, and it didn't work. Why? Because the first time came from a revelation direction from the Holy Spirit. The second time it came leaning on their own understanding. I mean, here's an example. Go with me to First Chronicle, because I want to show you something. In First Chronicle chapter 14. Am I okay with time, Mike? Okay. In First Chronicle chapter 14, verse 8 through 10, we find here David was being attacked by the Philistine. He said, now when the Philistine heard that David had been anointed king of all of Israel, all the Philistine went up to search for David, and David heard of it, and he went out against them. Then the Philistine went and made raid on the valley of Rephaim. Verse 10, and David inquired of God. Or you could say for us, and we Talk to the, we went to the Holy Spirit. We asked the Holy Spirit, amen. And David inquired of God saying, shall I go up against the Philistine? Will you deliver them into my hand? And the Lord said to him, go up for I will deliver them into your hand. So we see here that there was a problem. There was a major problem. He inquired of God and gave, God gave him the plan of battle. The strategy to overcome the problem of the, uh, of the Philistine. But look, a few verses later, three verses later, verse 13. Same place, same people, same problem. He said, then the Philistine once again met a raid on the valley. Therefore, David inquired again of God and God said to him you shall not go up after them circle, circle around them and come up them in front of the mulberry trees now think about it you know the temptation when we have a problem and the Holy Spirit speaks to us about that problem and we do it and it works 
The temptation is if we face the same problem, is to apply the same thing. And it won't work. What do we have to do? You notice David had a, a problem, then three verses later, the same problem, the same place, the same people. But what did he do? David learned his lesson, didn't he? He went back to God again. He said, hey, what shall I do? I know it's the same problem. I know it's the same place. I know it's the same people, but what shall... He did not lean on his own understanding. He didn't go and try to say, nah, you know, like little kids. Have you seen little kids? You know, you try to help them button their things. Nah, I can't do it by myself. It is such human nature to want to do... I mean, I can't handle it now. God, you led me to that point. Now I can handle it. God doesn't want us to handle it. He wants us to be so dependent because you see, the moment we think we can do it on our own, we become independent from God. And we've got to learn to depend on God. Even if it's the same problem, the same sickness, the same, we've got to say, okay, God, what shall I do now? And you notice God gave him a total different strategy. Do you understand what I'm, is that helping you? Because that is the temptation, you see. It's our human nature to want when we think we know how to do it, let's just get it done. But God says, no, I, I need you. I know what's going on. I know how to get you there. I just need you to be like, like a child, have the faith of a child that you run to me to say, okay, what shall I do? Shall I go up against them again like I did the first time? And he might say yes or he might say no. Don't go up, but circle them this time. Amen. Hallelujah. So that is, the, that is what we have to do. We have to be founded on the rock of the word. And then from that place of knowing the word, the Holy Spirit has something to work with. You see, it is a safe place. You have to be founded on the word. You have to put the word in your heart. And when the word is in your heart, the Holy Spirit, you won't have to even go to your Bible. The Holy Spirit will bring things to your remembrance. The Holy Spirit, even like he did with me, show you things to come. I don't know about you, but I prefer knowing the problem, knowing the battle ahead before. And then I can, I, you know, I can prepare accordingly. I can, and the Holy Ghost can show you the plan of attack. And you can get to the doctor with a big smile on your face saying, I've got my victory. I've got my healing. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. I know, you know, it's very simple. You know, it, what I preach this morning might not even be things you have never heard. It is so simple. But it doesn't mean that it's the easiest. It's going to take a certain focus on our part, a violence against and a, a dependence upon God. Amen.